tonight we are so excited to have Teresa Cook back. She's one of our members and she's gonna, she does all these wonderful tiny house paintings. And um, she's gonna guide us through her tiny house um, process. How, her <laughs> tiny house process, I'm really sorry, <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> and Teresa, would you tell us um, what, what you use, you know, what your, uh, you know, pens and pencils and everything and how your whole process. Um, okay. All right. So <laughs> thank you. I'll turn it over to you. <laughs> um, so I feel like I'm like, I feel so weird. Like now I'm on the camera again, <laughs> but, um, so I'm a watercolor artist, of course, here in Jacksonville. Um, and recently I, I've been doing a lot of miniature art, which they're like, you know, three inches by three inches in size, um, which I absolutely love to do and, okay, which I absolutely love to do. And so I also paint on a paper called UFO paper, but some people say UFO, some people say UFO, it's kind of like tomato, tomato. Um, but I paint on this paper. It's a really smooth, you know, it's like I have a sheet over here. So I paint on the translucent version of this paper. Let's see, if to, see it's kind of like a little shadow there. I paint on the translucent version of this paper. A lot of people use it for like alcohol ink painting. Um, but I love to do watercolor painting on it. I started doing watercolor painting on it when I was in college. Um, right before I graduated, I tried it out. My teachers didn't know anything about this paper and I took a break from using it. And about, I want to say maybe like six years ago, I started back using it again consistently. I've used it off and on over the last 12 years, but I started back using it again and I fell in love with it. So, um, and then initially they only had it in the white version. I started buying it in transparent because I like the look of it and how my watercolors look. So um, I think like a good amount of the stuff in here is like on the uh, UFO paper. Yeah, a lot of my stuff on my wall, a lot of my stuff in my studio, like I just did um, this Kummer painting. I did this while I was there. I started while I was there, but you can see it's like very translucent and it kind of adds like this weird blue sheen to all the colors. And of course it's partially because of the paint that I use, but it's also because of this paper in general. Um, and so I like the feel of it, I like the translucency of it. And sometimes I'll even add like white paper behind it and it just makes the colors pop even more. Um, I like this. I like the look of it. I like this versus like the um, solid white color version of it. I like the the layers. I'm able to see them differently. So um, that is like my choice paper. And I currently do basically everything on this paper, including the miniature paintings. Um, I recently um, have a show, well, I currently have a show with the comer. It's up until the 16th. And that whole show is all on the uh, paper. And um, I did 10 paintings for that show. And four of them include um, some miniature versions. Um, so I've been doing a lot of these lately. I recently just did the home tour paintings. All those paintings were for um, the homeowners. So I did the home tour um, and well, Preservation Jacks commissioned me to do 11 paintings. And initially, like, I think we talked about it maybe like a month or a month and a half before that. So it just so happened when they responded back to it again, it was like a week, week and a, like, I wanna say maybe like 10 days before the actual debut. So I painted all 11 of them um, which is on my Instagram as well as my Facebook. But I um, painted all 11 of them on the UFO paper. Um, and yeah, so then I was like, you know what, why not tonight be like, you know, everybody knows I do the, do the tiny stuff, but um, you guys have seen me done, doing a blind character drawing. 
but you actually haven't seen me do it like in a tiny version, um, which I really do enjoy doing. Um, it takes, I feel like it takes longer to do these tiny ones in comparison to doing like my bigger pieces sometimes because they get so detailed and sometimes you can get bogged down in all the details, which I tend to do that because I just like, I like what happens. Um, and since then, you know, I've done like a bunch of houses, like all in Riverside and like people's homes that they've, you know, connected to over the years, like their family homes. Um, I've done so many of them just from that home tour um, video that I did that I, uh, that I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I know people really liked it, but I, you know, I, I mean, you know, I love what I do, but I mean, I'd like for people, other people to love it too. So, um, I guess I can talk about like my materials too. Aside from like this people paper, which I always um, do it where I tape out. So these are, I have this really cool thing that I made. Um, and I've made this for even like my sm smaller pieces. They're like one inch by one inch. I have this little square cut out. So that way I can just drop it on there and then like do my little like line without me having to like, do, get a ruler every time so um I have this little like measuring tool that I made with just um I guess like water paper and then I just put tape on it um so I use that and then a lot of my drawings majority of all my drawings at this point are done with um the black ink pencil I don't really use the eraser I'm not really like a big eraser person because I like the the, the you know the happy mistake. I like being able to try to fix it. So um, I use this. If I'm not using this, I'll also use this, which this is perfect to draw onto the UFO paper with, and it's permanent. Um, and it doesn't come off. I mean, the only way you probably can get it off is if you, well, I know you can get it off with um, alcohol. That's it. But um, this is really good for um, doing my drawings for like my bigger pieces sometimes. But lately I've been doing the smaller versions with my pencils and I like the way it looks. Um, and then another thing that I use when I'm painting with these is it's gonna be like this. This is like a synthetic brush I ordered from um, this lady on Instagram. Well, she's a young lady on Instagram. She um, has these synthetic brushes made, but she's a really good watercolor artist. She does a lot of um, artwork. And um, her name is Paulina Bright. So um, let me see if I can get it right close. And this is like a zero brush. And you see, I use it all the time, right? So I use this brush. If I'm not using that, I also use this Da Vinci brush, which I just got recently, not too long ago. And now I use it all the time for my miniature art because it doesn't hold a ton of water. And um, as we go further along, I'll show you like why that's helpful when I'm working on the UFO paper versus, versus the regular watercolor paper. Um, and then I also use this brush here by um, Master's Touch. I really like um, Master's Touch brands. I know I'm not supposed to go to Hobby Lobby because I've heard too many people tell me that. But I still go for certain things. And I like that these brushes are inexpensive but they're the quality that I like and they're quick for me to quick access for me to get to. Um, so these are like some of my brushes here. And sometimes I use this, the jelly roll pens. I use this, but I use it on the um, regular watercolor paper because it has an actual texture. The smooth surface of this on the UFO paper makes it hard for me to get it to stick. So when I use that paper, I also use this. And I usually just kind of um, like put it out on like a piece of watercolor paper. And then I paint from it with that, with the actual white paint on top. So just add like pop the white to just add a different element to it. Um, matter of fact, I did that on summer painting here. So like here, like I have these white details that I added into it. Here I added the white details because um, I took the images, um, I took photos of what 
they have currently on display now that was like as their wall hangs on the outside. So they have like the primer sign, and then they also have a photo from the um um what's the name of the exhibit? I don't know. I can't think of it now. I'm part of the exhibit, and I can't even think of like what it is. But um, this exhibit um. The women's exhibition that they have, this is one of the displays out there. I don't know if it's still up because I know the exhibition is coming down, but I did that. But I like to use the, like I said, the pasta marker. And I usually just kind of like dap it out because I use so much. So I buy it in the biggest version that I can get to get as much of the um, acrylic ink that I need out of it um, in general. And yeah that's like pretty much like my method of madness and then my paint of choice is m gram watercolor paint um i'm addicted to this paint i've been using it for like i don't know i want to say maybe like six years now and i really love like you know see how they like they have this weird viscosity thing they're always like a weird wet happening but they're not you know actually wet it's just the because I think it's also because of this I have it on the ceramic paint palette um but also because the paints are made out of plenty so because they're made out of plenty they have this weird viscosity always happening like to the touch um and it stays you know I like how vibrant they are um red always takes over so I always have to be like very minimalistic red um, and all of these colors are that, except I think this one, the indigo is then on this palette. Um, and then I've also, I collected these paints. Um, I don't know if you guys heard of like the brush lady. She came here um, to plein air painters at Fort a couple of years, not a couple of years ago, maybe like, I want to say like four years ago. And I went there um, and met her. And then I also got paint and brushes from her that day. And so part of the paints that I bought were Daniel Smith and um, Maymare, I think I'm saying it right, May, Maymare Blue. Um, and that Maymare Blue is a French paint, which I, you know, really got connected to. But, um, I also have these that I use. So these are Daniel Smith and Maymare Blue um, watercolor paints. Like this is a Daniel Smith um, Lunar Black. It's Lunar Black is the only, I, th I think they're the only ones that make Lunar Black, if I'm not mistaken. Such a vibrant color. Um, but yeah, this is like, these are my favorite paints. I use these all the time. They're part of like my little miniature paint kits that you guys have seen me make. Um, I even have it a part of like this other paint kit I got years ago from this lady off of Etsy and I still use it. I just refill the paint. Um, and I just like it because the whole Dremel thing, she like, I think, I think she said her husband. No, she said she does. She Dremels all these holes out and they, you know, it allows you to like have all, as much as paint as you, I think I have like 16, well, 16 filled up. I don't even have all of them filled up in general, but I think it's just the coolest thing to be able to take your paints wherever you go. Um, I like the convenience of it. So usually like my bigger paint palette, which is like this, it stays in the studio because I don't want to drop it. I'll cry if I drop it because then I have to find someone to make it for me again. Um, it even comes with this little like cool little water cup. So the water cup and it has like a paintbrush hole. You can see your paintbrush right there. Um, and all of this is like made to go together, but I just I just try to keep it keep it from getting messed up. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I know all of you guys, so I feel like this is like you guys know this <laughs> this stuff in general because we sketch together and um, you know we I don't know I think I just know we've connected over the years of just being with the urban sketchers and so. I feel like this is like things that you guys know in general about me, but I mean, who knows, right? So today we are going to sketch in our tiny version 
And you're more than welcome to follow along if you want to. Or you can, um, you know, just watch. Um, and if you want to tape it out, I'll give you time for you guys to tape it out if you want to. Um, because like I said, they're three inches by three inches. Um, I don't use the, I've, I've done, I do two inches by two inches as well. But for a lot of my pieces of the homes, I've been doing them in that scale because I just like the way it looks. Um, this is like another photo of like one that I quickly took a photo of because I'm always like working on them. Um, this was a, a commission house like after the home tour. So this is like a totally different one from the home tour ones. Now this home is a part of the home tour. And um, I met the couple that lives there and they have such a cool house. They collected all of these like old pieces and um from the city or just things that I mean the, the house is like they have all these historic elements like all around the wall of the house I mean it's just so cool to see and one of the things I really liked was this so like remember the mouth that was at the um Hemming Plaza which is now James Wood Johnson Park they had this mouth and when I saw it I was like Oh my God. So the original painting that I painted has the mouth in there. I made sure I put it in there because I felt like if I didn't add it, it wouldn't make sense because I was so connected to the mouth. It's like, and literally like you pass through the, you pass behind the, the pool back here. You pass by the pool and you walk through the mouth on the way out. So um, it was such a coolest thing. Like their whole house is very historic and they have these historical elements in these rooms that they've collected, you know, like old telephones and old trains, old toys for kids. They've collected so much stuff. And 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 they have it's almost like this like museum happening, but very it, it's it's like a nice aesthetic. It's not like a bunch of junk, like a vintage shop where you just throw it all in there. It's really it really makes sense how they have it all put together. Um and so I just wanted to make sure we do this one. And plus, I'm not gonna lie, this is like one of the hardest ones. I think I like it because like this, it has this um, Asian aesthetic to me on the outside. Um, and I was like, you know what, why not? Why not paint this? Because like, I love the mouth. And so the cool thing about this piece is like looking at it, it looks like you can't fit it in there, but it did fit. So, um, I did tape out two different versions. One is on freckle or color paper, so it has a little texture there. And then one on the uh, Yupo paper. Um, I'm just going to work on the Yupo paper because I'm just, this like normal to me. Um, so usually when I do these drawings, I do them like with focusing on the two main corners like the two outside corners of the house. And that way it'll tell me like how proportion everything else will fit into place. Um, like sometimes I even like add my little marks, sometimes I don't. Because like I said, I am like a blind contour drawing artist. So I just kind of work from um, like how I like to work basically. So this is the home that I did. Um, yeah, so I'll just get started. So, like I said, I use these pencil series that are black green pencils, which is I like these. I use a natural version because it does have like a harder tip, it's not as super soft. Did someone say something? Okay, so for this one, let's see. I, I just wanted to mention um if you need a square i used a coaster and just kind of traced it so that kind of helps to make a nice square if you don't already have one <laughs> so oh no i i was saying before i use my own little method of my madness with my measurement so that way i can because the useful paper is translucent so if i sit it on top of something and do it i can't see uh -huh. what size like depending on my paper size um, because we... I intentionally work um, a lot of my, my paper sizes. 
are meant to fit like a four inch, my four inch frame. So um, I've already cut the paper out to fit perfectly into this frame when I do them. And that um, makes my job easier. So I, I, are we are we supposed to be drawing it in a square format though on our end tonight? Well, I suggested it. Oh, okay, that's cool. I was just saying if you if anybody needed to draw a square, they could use a poster. That's all. <laughs> so. Okay. So let's see. I forgot. I forgot my train of thought. Just um, <laughs> but um, yeah. So using what I do. Is, like I said, I draw very quickly in a blind crunch method. Um, and let's see, I didn't switch it around. There we go. Let's see. And I, do you guys all have the picture, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, then. Because I'm just going to move my camera up and you need to see it. I just wanted to make sure I didn't know how to do it. Here. So, um, and what I tend to do, I think for this, I initially started house board. And so the architectural side of me sometimes comes up, not all the time. I just want it to be very quick. So even if it's not perfect, I'm not concerned with that. My goal is to just make sure I just kind of get it in the right spot. And as you can see, sometimes I will overlap my lines, but I just, I like the way that looks. And I'm not trying to make it be perfect because I don't know. I mean, this is not really like my thing, I guess. I don't, I'm not trying to perfect it or make the lines perfect. Oh, you know what? I left something out. So another thing about you whole paper, like, you know, I have this mark here. I don't really um, erase a lot on you whole paper because, because the interesting part about this paper is once I put the water on it, sometimes it will, um, kind of like separate from the paper and I have to kind of move the paint around to, to rework that surface in. Um, that usually happens because how this paper is designed is so, well, it's made out of polypropylene. So it's a really smooth paper. And what you end up happening is that it will interrupt that surface. Even like the oils on your hands will do it, um, which is why like I try not to touch it as much. Um, I just like, to um, make sure I'm like focus oh, on that, and just keep working from it. Um, but I used to just I still touch over the paper because it's kind of like. So usually what I do is I work very quickly, and I'm not trying to focus on like get bogged down in all the details. Just want to just get it on there. Um, and like I was telling you guys before, I'm not like a big person. I was like big on erasing. I'm kind of like a commitment person. Like once it's down there, it's going to stay. Um, um, so let's see. So I tend to just work very quickly. Well, I try to get it out quick, but it's kind of hard sometimes because it's like all the details that you have to add into it. But sometimes the way I always make it work, I guess.
I was looking at the two. You see that little mark I made end up being something anyway. It worked without me having to try to erase it. Do you ever draw this part in pen? Um, I've, I've done it in pen, but I usually do like my bigger ones in the pen, um, like how I did on here. Matter of fact, I even do like how I used to do, which is like doing the bigger lines, the bigger, bolder lines. Um, I just like the look of what happens when I'm doing it. Um, but sometimes like for this, I just do the pencil because I'm like able to like get the lines better. I feel like it normally I um, I do work in the marker just because I just like the quickness of it. And, you know, you can't I don't want to like fix anything. I just want to just keep working and try to figure it out along the way. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's usually like my normal like I've been using these pencils more like for the smaller ones just like how I did here and all of these um ones that I've been doing lately even you know I paint like dogs I'm painting dogs for people same scale with the pencil um just so that way I think I'm doing that to make sure the details don't get lost because even though I'm doing it smaller I just I'm also trying to make sure like, like everything is noticeable and sometimes with my line work, I'll add it for details, but my concern is making sure like that you would know like what's happening. You can tell what's going on. I don't know what that thing she says.
I think a lot of the other stuff, I just end up, you know, adding into it as I go. Like even like the plants and things, like I just kind of do like my quick squiggles, just to, like as a reference of noting like what it is. Because um, I think the line work, um, it's not, it doesn't have to be super detailed for me. My concern is just that getting it on the paper, being able to recognize like what I'm looking at. And then the color, I think is the, that's the color is the part that I like the most. I think the color adds like so much more detail and um, it makes it look more vibrant. I like this house. So it has a lot of plants. I really like that. My trees, even like in the background, I just kind of make them very like stylized, just like a representation of it being trees. I don't think you have to like make it as specific as what, you know, how we see it. Um, Cause I think that takes like the creative license away to be able to do it the way you want to do it. And, you know, um, I don't know, like, I've had people like even ask me like why I do it that way or why I don't spend time focusing on those details because I feel like, I don't know, if I wanted, I can just get a photo of it, you know, if I want to perfect it and or look at things that way, but I don't, I just like the simplicity of like being able to create these lines and, and it'd be quick and fluid and um, I think it has like a different personal touch to it. I don't know, I guess it's just like my, I don't know, like, you know, my style or, you know, appreciating like the way it looks at that time. That's like another thing for me. But even that, though it's very small, you still are able to add 
plenty of details, right? You're right. And the reason why I just kind of turned it just then is because um, because I'm using the pencil, I don't want to like smudge anything or um, you know mess up what I got going on here. So I just tend to just I just want to make sure I add the mouth. I can't really see what you're calling a mouth. It, I, oh. I, can't, I can't even get it at all. I see where you're pointing, but it oh. it, it just looks like a stump to me, the bo bottom side of a stump. <laughs> really, that's what it looks like to me. It's I, a face <laughs> laying on its side. Yeah. It's a face laying on its side. I can't see it at all. Yeah, remember, like, I don't know if you ever saw it. Because, you know, that day, I think me and Jamie, yeah, it was like Jamie was leading our urban sketching group that day when we went to um, Hemi Plaza, and it was still there at the time. I it wasn't there now. I yeah, I, I didn't know it either until I um I saw it on the photo, and I was like, wait a minute, did they move that? And then I went <laughs> to Hemi Plaza, and I was like, wait a minute, it's not there. Like, it's gone. <laughs> That's interesting, because so we both drew it that day. I know we both. That's what I said. I was like, "Turn!" I'm like, "Where did this go? Like, how did this happen?" Like, well, I'm kind of glad they moved it because it was getting all beat up. People were painting on it. And yeah, stuff. people were painting on it, and you know, it was just it was just a lot of activity over that way. So, just I'm glad they, but they they collected it. I think to keep it from you know being lost, yeah. which I'm happy. All right, so then all the other details I add into it. I'm done. Yeah, I'm not thinking. So. There you go. So, and the cool thing, I really like this window that they had. Very interesting. All right. I think I'm committed to it now. Oh, wait, I left out something. Okay, I think I'm committed now. All right. So, and the only thing, I think I didn't, sometimes I even add like, just a detailed element of noting like the texture of the home. I can't think of the name of that um that that type of roofing. I can't remember the name of it, but I really like it. The roofing material. Yeah, what's the name of that? Um, I can't think of the name of it. Stucco. No, like the this part of it, like how it has this texture and so um, terracotta no? yeah I think, I think they're barrel barrel tiles oh barrel tiles clay barrel tiles I can't, I can't see them so we have that view auto turn on the left cam and laptop click windows button type camera Open. 
<laughs> so this is usually how it goes. And I always, um, I work just like how I work the whole paper. Like if I have a big piece, um, I work it that way. So what I've learned with, um, with painting with this is just, I usually work um, light to dark, of course, just like with regular watercolor. But I always um, start with like the sky first. And then the thing that I end up doing last is the uh, the trees. And I don't know if you saw like before, like I have like these like splotches of like paint because I literally like throw the, the, the last part on there, which is the green paint. I throw it on last. I like the way it looks. Um, and I like the pops of color that happens. And I think it adds like another element of um, layer to what, what I'm doing. So, like for this, I'm going to use this brush here. Yes, I'm able to detect the camera in Windows 11 and Windows 10. And to fix this issue simply. I can. Okay. I'm going to mute someone. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, good. So, um, I'm just going to come up. So I see. Paint palette and everything. Okay. okay. So I'm going to move some stuff around because I don't know, less is more in my mind. So even though I have all my stuff out here for you guys to see, I'm probably only going to use this one brush. Um, and this color here is the manganese I think it's manganese blue which it kind of has like a turquoise undertone versus like cerulean has like more of a blue undertone so um but I like how the sky looked that day so I'm gonna go with that and I usually just paint right on top and I don't add a ton of water when I'm painting with this. So if you guys can even see, it's like I have very little water on it. See, it just has like that little sheen happening. Very little water on it because when you're painting on UFO paper, the less is more when it comes to that. Um, because then it takes, it doesn't, it has about the same amount of drying time because I've used it out with the Urban Sketchers and um, I just really enjoy using it. Um, but what I've learned is that the less water I have, the easier it is for me to complete my project without spending like a ton of time trying to, when I want to add layers, because this is already a hard paper to paint on, the more water I have, the harder it is for me to put the layers on there, because it's going to take a long time for it to dry. So, and the thing about this paper is it, the water isn't absorbed into the paper, just like regular watercolor paper. It is, um, the component is, is that water has to evaporate. So, and you can lift out just like how you have like um, regular, um, regular uh, watercolor paper, you can lift out the same way, but I tend to do that as well. Just not, I try not to do it as often because the, this paper will also um, take the pigment of the um, watercolor. Depending on which watercolors that I use, it will hold the pigment longer. So, what are you talking about? Right, so. This is the part where I just work around. So like I'm gonna work on the face here. And while that is drying, I'll pick another spot to work. So now I'm gonna work on everything. Since this is like pretty much dry. Thank you. 
Uh, see, see what's happening here. Let's see if I can like get close. So when I was like painting on here, the water wasn't sticking because I probably like rubbed this paper earlier today, but it's okay. It eventually sticks on there like we were painting it. And I usually end up going over it again, and like in certain areas, just because um, this is like the first layer of me adding the color to it. So I usually end up going back over it. So I'm okay with it like being kind of quick because I know I'm going to go back over it again and just so I can see the details better. Can you guys still hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, good. kids are the next door neighbors they're playing <laughs> they playing outside i was like what is happening in my studio
So when the leaves start to dry, you get the chance to see like all the different layers happening, which is what I really like about this paper the most. I think a lot of times like with regular, which I still paint a regular work on paper. I don't want to like throw it away, but um, I just like the, what happens when I'm painting on this paper versus um, I just like the vibrancy of the colors. And I, I don't know, I just like seeing what happens, to be honest with you. So I'm like, I can paint on top because I'm just adding more paint and less water to it. So that way what happens is you don't interrupt. You still have like these blue layers that show through, but you're not losing like where it gets muddied up. And it's very possible to get muddied up when you have too much water on um, this paper in general. So and like as you can see, I even I have like very little. Let me see here. Okay. So I end up having like very little um, paint on the paper. I mean, I'm sorry, not paint, but water on the paper. In the areas that it does, you see it has like this weird little sheen thing happening. Let's see if I can get it to show. Yeah, you see that. Yeah, it reflects. Yeah, so it has a lot more water on it, but um, it will still dry. And if I have to like pull it out, you know, if you just have like a semi-wet brush, you can always clean this off too, which I, this is another reason why I like this paper because I'm able to fix things a whole lot easier than um, using regular watercolor paper. And I usually just kind of lightly dab the paint on there when I'm adding more layers. 
because that way it keeps me from interrupting the paint below. <clears throat> And then when I start adding like shadows, I just go a little bit darker and I add just a little bit of water and I just kind of sweep across it because what I'm trying to do is just get it on there. Like see, that way you still have like the, you can still see there with like a blue undertone, but it's not completely um, mixed. Like it's not actually mixed up with the other color. Teresa, do you have any workshops coming up? Um, yeah, I do. I actually have one on the 23rd at the Comer. So material exploration workshop. I've done them in the past where we use um, soft pastel, watercolor pencil, modeling paste. Sometimes I add gold leaf, but um, for this one, I'm not going to do the gold leaf. Um, but we will be doing a little miniature uh landscape um usually what i end up doing is taping everything out for everybody so that way um they can create easier or not have to overthink it as much um but my goal with that is to get them to learn that there's so many other materials that you can use besides just watercolor to get this effect um so we use like the soft pastel which i love using that and we use the watercolor pencils um and you know, and then I'll, of course, end up talking about like all the other different materials that you can use. Like you can paint with coffee, which I do a coffee painting workshop. You can paint with wine, which there's like the wine, like this is like a sweet red wine here, but they all like sweet red, Merlot, Cabernet. Um, I paint with those and they all have a different color undertone. So people will think that, um, you know, just red wine, but they all, some of them have like a, like Merlot has like a purplish undertone. Um, sweet red has more of like a red undertone. And it's, I mean, I'm not sweet red, but sweet red has more of a pink undertone. Cabernet has more of a red. Um, and I like the opportunity of being able to show people you can paint with different materials. So um, the material exploration workshop is, um, it's really fun, especially when we use the modeling paste. It's a very thick paste. Um, it dries very quickly, but you're able to put watercolor on it as well. Um, I painted with acrylic ink on top of it, watercolor and everything. And it's, it's fun to do. And um, so I'm excited. I'm so glad that workshop. So I haven't taught it in about a year, I want to say. So I'm excited about it. That sounds and interesting. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> And I think, oh, and I'm also doing a workshop in August at the Comer as well, um, urban sketching. We'll, we'll actually plein air painting in the gardens. So, um, which I like, I love the plein air paint. I just did one of, I just did a workshop like that at MOCA and that was really, really fun. So we did it in the James Wood and Johnson Park and we painted MOCA on the other side of that. So it's really good.
Say, Hannah, I have a technical question. I'm on Zoom. How do I reverse my camera? <laughs> I think... My video is like shooting out the back door. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe you go got it. Okay. I figured it out. You know, Teresa, what's what's amazing about that paper and that technique, you know, watercolor is challenging in its own right. Mm -hmm. you have it on a very slick surface and using the layers you are, I mean, that's even more challenging. Yeah, it's nice technique, you know, really nice technique. Thank you. Yeah, I've just learned to just be quick and, and work quickly and um, but also like you know, it's kind of like when you're doing on regular watercolor paper, it's like more water is better, right? Um, yeah, yeah. And that's because, of course, it is easier to push the paint around because the paper is going to absorb that that water so fast versus like with this, it's the opposite. It's like, okay, I have to like control like how much water I use because if I use a ton more water than what I want, what happens is I'm not able to get all the layers. Like you can't see the effects that I'm trying to make happen. So yep. I've learned to just kind of go light, go as light as possible. The cool thing about this paper is like, hey, we go too much. Just lift it out and we can fix it. Yeah, and that's usually, that's very unusual for watercolor. It's usually pretty unforgivable. Yeah. <laughs> usually like when I um introduce this in my workshops, everybody like, you know, that when they leave, they're like, oh, see, this is this is what I needed. Like I can, I can use this paper instead of, you know, like them struggling with it. And then they learn like, cause I've taught like my how to watercolor workshops and I always show them different types of paper. Like we work on hot press paper, cold, cold press paper, um, mixed media paper. And then the last one is the UFO. And the UFO one is the one that they're like, well, you should have gave me this first. And then I, I wouldn't have never complained. <laughs> you know, as much as I did, because I'm like, okay, they, they grasp it differently. Um, yeah. and I've even figured out, like, if I, I give them prints of my paintings that I've done and they do it in reverse. So it's basically like they're creating the painting, um, that I've done and it's much easier for them to try to figure it out versus like, if I give them an image like this, because they don't know how to like, paint it the way I paint or they want to paint the way I paint they're trying to figure it out so I show them like okay I'll give it to you in reverse and they create the they rec recreate my painting every time every time it's the coolest thing when I see that <laughs> and then they're like how does this happen like how I'm like you know what it's kind of like one of those things like you know when I give it to you like this you see it's overwhelming but when I give it to you, like in the way that I paint, you're more intrigued to try to create it because you're more relaxed with it, I think. Um, I think that's the thing, what happens. Like they get a little bit more relaxed and they're able to just create instead of trying to make it match like what they see. Yep. How much time do I have? Okay, I have eight more minutes, right? Okay. So I, what I'm going to do is just add, usually what I do, I just kind of add this on really quickly. Um, yeah, add some of the white details. Uh, All right. So here's that Oscar thing. thing. So you see it's like, don't tell on that, but it's all 
Uh oh. And it's all over my hand, as usual. Another reason why I don't use these as much. I don't like my hands getting there again. It's okay though. So what I did was I added like a little bit of white paint on here. And um, I usually add this for like certain details. So like for this, I'll add it a little bit. So I'll add it down here. Sometimes I add them in the window. I need to kind of let them mix because it just adds to the element. You know what I'll do is add dark green like I do, just so you guys can see what I do when I'm doing this. So this is another, um, it's called a long round brush. But I like it because it, it's kind of, you know, goes back in shape. It's very flippy. So I use that brush. I add, I load it up with water. And then, so of course, it makes a lot of paint. Now, and I just kind of put it like specifically where I need to go. <laughs> right now, it's kind of moving. But. I used to kind of hold it so that way I can get it exactly where I want it to go. And it's really cool once it dries because it adds another little element to it.
in the areas where I don't want it to stay, I go into it and I just lift it out. And then I just go right back. Just add it on there. And I've done this method of repairing a bunch of times. I've had paintings that um that I have water drop on by accident and I have to fix it. So I will fix it. That way no one notices that I actually had to do a repair job. No one notices it. We're getting close, Teresa. Okay, I'm done. I'm done now. I'm done. <laughs> but yeah, so then what happens is you get like a lot of layers that you normally don't see. And I just let this dry, which usually like if I add it like this, I kind of, it only takes maybe like 10 minutes. I let it dry really good. And then I frame them and and I usually make everything, or usually whatever I paint, I paint it to be framed. I don't know. I just have this weird thing about like in my mind, presentation or whatever the case may be. And I want to, you know, make it stand out as much as possible. So I would do that. So little, the areas that are still wet. But it dries pretty quickly. Doesn't take long. And yeah, that's kind of like what happens when I'm doing it. I usually take longer, but I was like, that's why I asked you, Lisa, how much time did, <laughs> did I have? Because I was like, I'm just going to have to like work quick in my mind and, you know, um, not get so bogged down on all the details, even though I can't help it. So, so did anybody? Okay. I did. Oh yeah. Just <laughs> one see. I I didn't paint, but I did something. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh I like yeah. it. Look at that. Yes. That's They're beautiful. Great. They look great. I'm going to okay, I'm mm -hmm. going to start with Lisa. Made a little tiny one, Lisa. Nah. Oh yeah, I like <laughs> it. Oh, looks good. Thanks. Mine is mine is tiny too. Really good. Let me see. Who, who is who is? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Joanna, I like that one. That's good. Oh, Thanks. Yeah. It was yeah. fun. Oh, Phil. Oh, oh, Phil that's I have the same book. It's got square pages. It helps. Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh, that came out great. Yeah, it's great going it, small. Uh, it was you, fun to do it really tiny. I, I yeah. never would have done a house with this much detail that tiny before. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that was cool. I, I like it. Wow, that's, yeah, no. beautiful. Phyllis, yours is beautiful too. Okay, that's amazing yeah. Mary, detail. Mary, Mary, Mary. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Oh, that came out oh. great. Yeah, yeah, this is fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh. oh, yeah. Oh, that's, nice. Nice. Oh. that's nice. That's great. Very vibrant. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, oh, wow. Oh, Chris, boy. that's. Short period of time. That's beautiful. Wow. That's good. Looks That's fun. Good. I like small. Really nice. Jamie. <laughs> Jamie. Those are great. Well, of course, oh, Jamie. Jamie. All right. Aww. Yeah. Oh, you got the face. <laughs> hey, awesome. I just couldn't see it. Yeah. 
Yeah. You couldn't good. see anything wow. about it. Hey, oh, yeah. I can see it now that I see yours. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Fun to go small. No. Uh, Scott, Scott. I did three. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Nice. 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 Oh, that's very nice. nice. Very nice. Uh, three. Oh, three. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> Three times. I know. Oh, that's good. You're fast. Oh, I love you. Mm. Okay, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> well, who else? Well, um, I'm missing. I didn't see yours, Jeanette, at the beginning. Jeanette, mm -hmm. yeah. can't see yeah. myself. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh that's great. Oh, nice. oh, yeah. Love it. Good. Very good. Yeah. Wow. Very nice. Yeah. Very good. Am I missing someone? No. What well, yours? Mine. Okay, let me. Think. Yeah, yours. We're missing yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love it. I love the sky. Oh, so gorgeous. Good. good. Perfect. Wow. That's beautiful. Wow. Got the face too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Hey, Lisa, did we see yours? Yeah, you saw mine in the very beginning. Oh well, I was yeah. wasn't paying attention. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Awesome. Nice. Right. Good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. That's uh, awesome. If, can we have like a group picture? Yeah, let's get a picture. Group picture. All right. Let's get a picture, please. One, two, three. Yes. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Great fun. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Marie said a great job. That's that's yeah. a difficult medium, and and you just like complicated all the issues with smooth paper and layers with watercolor. You did a great job. Thank nice. you. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Hey, everybody. I wanted to tell you I'm reading this really great book, and I don't know if any of you read this. You probably all have the Daily Painter by mm -hmm. um, Carol Marine, hmm. and if you're a painter like I am and you get stuck, which I've been for a while, she really has, she can get you going. And it's really good. You do little paintings every day and use any medium. And it's just every day, every day, one hour, one hour painting every day. And if you can't find one hour to paint every day, what are we doing, right? <laughs> Well, I can't find one hour, but 30 minutes works for me. 30 I minutes. Minute. And you were doing really good on that 30 minutes uh, painting, yeah. too. That's and I did my 30, and then I kind of stopped. <laughs> yep. Yep. I know. That's what but do. anyways, if, if, you, uh, can, if you see that book, it's really, really quite good. She paints in oil, but she oh, talks well, about painting in watercolor, in <laughs> acrylic in um, pastel and whatever medium that you like. And uh, it's it's really, it's motivational. It's a really good book. Cool. cool. Thank you. Thank you for okay, sharing. no problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for coming. It Thank you, Lisa. Fun. Thank you, Thank Teresa. You. Thank you, Great job. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.